what have I gotten myself into? That is what you might be thinking to yourself if you removed the instrument cluster from your 65 or 66 Mustang and you don't remember where everything goes. But don't worry, don't panic, don't freak out, don't jump on forums and spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure it out. Um, just watch this video, we're gonna take you through this on how to put all these little wires back together on the back of your instrument cluster for a 66 Mustang. What's up everyone, welcome back to Alps Mustang Garage. Today we're working on a gorgeous 1966 Mustang convertible and we have an instrument cluster we're trying to get back in and get all the wires installed correctly. So the first thing you're going to want to do, and I advocate for this stuff on virtually all of my electrical videos is to purchase one of these uh, wiring diagrams from Classic Car Wiring. You can also get them from National Parts Depot. But these are very correct. It's very easy to read, very easy to follow. Um, it's laminated, so you're not gonna like destroy it, getting it dirty or anything like that. Um, so we're going to take you through this one wire at a time to show you where the placement goes on this instrument cluster. Now this is a 66 cluster, um, or 6 pod cluster. You also find this on a 65 uh, GT model, uh, but mostly on the 66. So we are going to do this one side at a time because if you get the, if you get the cluster in there, um, there's not enough room to sh actually show you the back side. So I'm going to do, so the way I'm going to film this is I'm going to do like this side of the cluster, the right hand side, and then I'm going to disconnect it and show you the left hand side of the cluster. Okay, first of all, I got to put on some uh, nice fancy orange gloves for Christmas. My niece, who is three years old, Emmy, got me some nice orange gloves for Christmas because she noticed I wasn't wearing them in the videos anymore. So I gotta say hi to my number one fan. Hi, Emmy, and thank you for the gloves. Okay, so we're working on the uh, right-hand side here. So we got the back of the temperature gauge. Now the temperature gauge wires on this is gonna be a red wire. as well as a black and green wire. So let me clarify that again. Um, you have a black wire with green tracer and a red wire with a white tracer for the temperature feed there. Okay, the next gauge is the ammeter or amp gauge that is a solid red and a solid yellow. And those go right there. Okay, and that's it for gauges on the right hand side. Now you just have a series of three bulbs uh, two of these wires are blue with red tracers, and there's one that has a blue with a white tracer. The blue with white is your turn signal indicator, so that's going to go up here in the uh, top right hand here. And those bulbs you just kind of pop in like that. The other two are just back lights, so the placement of those, you can kind of tell naturally where they kind of naturally rest, but ultimately 
if you mix those up, it wouldn't be an issue. Okay, so there is the installation for the uh, right hand side of the instrument cluster. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is hook up our constant voltage regulator. You're going to have a black wire with a green tracer. And that one, the, the connectors on that, you know, there's only one way it can go, which is like that. And then you're going to have another series of wires that are kind of all connected like this. And these are, again, all black with green tracers. And so it's going to go on the other end of your constant voltage regulator like that. And then these two ends are going to feed two of your gauges. You got a fuel level as well as your uh, oil pressure. So. And that's your constant voltage regulator uh, setup right there. So it goes, you know, power in and then your power out to two gauges. Um, you have another wire that kind of loops around to the other side that we already showed you. And that was for the, uh, the temperature on the other side. So then you have your yellow, which is for your fuel. And that one goes right there. Then you have a white with a red tracer. That one's for oil pressure. And that one goes right there. Now we have a light bulb with a green and white tracer. That's your left turn indicator. That one is going to go right there. You have a normal backlight, gauge light, blue with red tracer, that goes there. And you also have a green with a black tracer. That's a high beam indicator. It goes right here in the center. on here and then we have another backlight blue with the red tracer that goes there okay so the last wire that is here is just a solid black it's a solid black wire and there's a little ground tab that's right here by the constant voltage regulator and that's where that goes. So if you want to test everything to see if this is all correct, um, you should have power going in to your constant voltage regulator. And that's, you know, again, from the black with green striped wire. That's with key on. With the key on, you're gonna get that constant, constant voltage going in. But then on the other side of the regulator, you're gonna get the pulsed voltage. If you can see, my test light is just, kinda of has a delay to it, it's pulsing. Now, originally they actually pulsed a lot faster, but this is like a refurbished constant voltage regulator, so it's pulsing a little slower but it still pulses and also gets a reduced voltage. So, and that is what's going to supply voltage over here to your gauge. Um, I should clarify the oil pressure gauge. Um, it's also going to get it over here to the temperature gauge. You can see the pulse there. And on the right hand side, it'll get the uh, 
or I'm sorry, this is the fuel level gauge on the right hand side, it'll get the temperature gauge. But it's going to send those pulse signals there. And then the wire coming out of that gauge will go to its corresponding uh, sending unit. Okay, so I hope that kind of clears up some confusion there um, as far as how all those go back in. I know electrical can be kind of challenging for people. Um, it's very frustrating. But if you have the correct tools, like a wiring diagram, and the correct resources like a wiring diagram, you can tackle this you know, very methodically and, and get this correct. Um, but this is the only way I could like actually film this um, being in the car and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to have to like put this into the car and then plug everything in and, and, and tackle it from there but but anyways as always i hope that was helpful thanks for watching appreciate it. if you have any questions or comments uh don't be afraid to leave those below and, and um i'll get with you as i as i can and uh we'll catch you next time